hello my lovelies welcome back to my channel this is your girl angel from simply angel tia in this video i'm going to show you guys how to crochet these fingerless gloves with hearts and as you can see they look pretty nice this is something that you could probably make for valentine's day or if you're a man you could order these for your loved one for valentine's day i know it just passed but hey you can always get ready for next year or you could just buy these for someone uh, that you love and care about or if you're making this for someone you love and care about anyway so these are what we're going to be working on today for the heart section you can either wear it on the outside like this as you see me have on or you could just flip the fingerless gloves and have them facing the inside of your thumb so you just have to switch the pairs and have them uh, on the other hand and that will make it so that it's on the inside of the palm like that, which I think is also super cool. Okay, so this is another way that you can have them. Or you can have them the other way around where the heart ends up on the side of your hand, on the outside of your hand. Okay, so let's not waste any more time. Let's go ahead and get started with these guys. Okay, my lovelies. So before I go ahead and get the project started, I'm going to show you everything that I need for my project okay so as you can see here i have these two colors for yarn it's just some scrap yarn that i have laying around but i will put all the information in the description box so go ahead and check that before you get started um, and as you can see i have two colors obviously because i'm making the body of the wrist warmer in this color and then we're doing the heart uh to go with it in this in the red color okay uh, in terms of crochet hook i'm using a five millimeter crochet hook which is h8 us I have my darning needle and I have my scissors as well. So we have everything here. Go ahead and put everything away beside this, the crochet hook and the yarn, this one actually. And then let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and get started here. So as you can see, I'm leaving a long tail uh, for my yarn here. And this is just gonna be used to join our wrist warmer together, okay? So this is an option, you don't have to do it. You could start it very at very beginning here, but I tend to just do this as a preference, okay? And now we're going to start a foundation chain for the risk part of our risk warmer. And I'm going to do a chain of 13, but to do so, I'm going to start with a slip knot. Just like that. That's my slip knot. And so you can go ahead and do it however you prefer to do it or however you find comfortable. And when you have it done, we're going to do our chain of 13. So one, two, three, four, five. So that is our chain of 13. And to go ahead and get started with our first row, we're going to turn our work this way. This is the front side uh, of the chain that's facing me. And if I flip it like this, this is the back of the chain that is at this moment facing away from me. We're going to be working in the back of the chain for this row. We're going to skip this first stitch right here in the second stitch we're going to flip our work so we have the back of it like this and we're going to go into the back and grab that lump that bridge looking back and we're going to do our single crochet stitch just like that okay and then we're going to go right into the next one right here go into the back of it okay and then do your single crochet again and we're going to do this all the way until we get to the end of this row which is this chain and by the time you get to the end you should have 12 stitches all together because we skipped one stitch at the beginning and so from our 13 stitches we're going to go down to 12 and that's going to be the number of uh, stitches you're working with for this part of the project okay so go ahead and do that when you get to the end of the chain or this first row come back and I'll show you how to move on to the second row which is our repeat row for this part of the project okay so that is the end of our first row we have 12 stitches all together so I'm going to show you how to do the second row which is our repeat row for this part so chain one and turn and when you turn you're just going to start doing your single crochet in the back loop of the very first stitch right after your chain one and you do your single crochet stitch there then you're going to pick up the back stitch of the second uh, back loop of the second stitch and do your single crochet and you're going to do this all down the uh, to the end of this row 
what i do is for the final stitch for this row i'm going to do uh the single crochet going through both loops of the of the stitch and that's gonna be what i do uh in every row as well at the end the final stitch which is our 12th stitch i'm going to be going through both loops and that's a preference of mine you don't have to do the same thing you can go through the back loop uh with all 12 stitches I just prefer to do the final stitch by going through both loops okay so speaking of that i'm now at the end i have one stitch to go so i'm just going to go through both loops and finish off like that okay so that's the end of our second row which is our repeat row and i'm going to start the third row which is chain one again and turn so each uh, row is going to start with a chain one and then you just go ahead and do your you know single crochets in the back loop okay so go ahead and do this until you have the number of rows you require to cover your risk so if you're making it for yourself you're gonna want to measure to see how um how how much how many rows you require to cover the risk so uh i usually measure in, in inches and for me i'm going to need usually about 22 rows uh, in this stitch because if you're doing different stitches then you would require a different number of rows because some stitches are wider than others some of them are tighter than others so for this stitch i'm going to be doing 22 rows and when i have my 22 rows completed then i'm gonna come back and i'll show you guys how to move on to the next part of this tutorial okay so see you guys when you have reached the end okay guys so i've gone ahead and completed my 22 rows for the wrist warmer part here so this is pretty much the part that goes on your wrist like this right so that is what i have completed pretty much okay so we're going to now start the part where we work up this way and as you can see here i'm just going to do a chain of one and then we're going to work on our half double crochet stitches across here so my first half double crochet stitch will go in the very first stitch right here at the beginning of the of the row and then my second one will go on top of this area here and then my second one is going to go in the valley or this dented area and then the next one is going to go on top and then in the dented area on top and so on and so forth so i'm just going to complete this row of half double crochet all across this row or across this the top of this section here and then this is pretty much going to be the repeat of the work until we have the length of our uh, wrist warmer however far you want it to go up your hand okay so if you want it to be super short then please measure your hand and see how many um and see how many rows you need to accomplish that length and if you want it longer the same thing okay so i'm going to go ahead and do 16 rows of this 15 to 16 rows and when i have completed that what i usually do when i'm working on wrist warmers because more often i i do them for myself for my uh, hands so i just keep trying them on me as i go and eventually i will realize that's the length i want and then i stop there but obviously if you're looking to make this for someone else it's good to know the measurement as well on how you measure it so in my case here i'm just going to be trying it on my hand and i know i'll probably need about 16 15 16 rows of this so as you can see i've just done this all the way to the end okay and then i did a chain one but this is what i mean by measuring it on your hand so I know that this part is that part here. So I just put it here flat. So as I work on my wrist warm and it keeps building up like this, I'll keep putting it flat on the floor and putting my hand on it and then seeing how far more I want it to go. So this is how you usually do. But obviously you want it to go past your, uh, your thumb because you need to be able to put your thumb somewhere. So you're going to end up going past that. Sometimes maybe it's just right. Sometimes maybe just right after your thumb or sometimes you may go a little bit further okay so this is my um first row here and i did my chain one and i turn and then i just repeat that again and i go through both loops okay and i'm going to continue to do the half double crochets and when i get to the end i chain one i turn i repeat 
and we're not going through the back loop only or the front loop only we're just going through both uh, both loops and doing our half double crochet so this is just called regular half double crochet okay so we may do some other risk warmers in the future where we go through the back loop only like we did this part to create that kind of rip uh, effect but for now we're just doing this and also because we're going to be putting our heart we're going to be creating a flatter surface to be able to put our heart uh, on okay so go ahead and do this and then when you have the number of rows you require for the length of your risk warmer come back to the video and we will look at how it looks and then we'll move to the next step together okay see you guys in a bit okay guys so i've gone ahead and completed my 16 rows of the half double crochet here the stitch right after we finish the band uh, or the base of the wrist warmer and that's what we should have so far so the work is going to pretty much be folded like this and then we would be jo we will be joining it here having a thumbnail hold around somewhere here and then finishing it off. But since we're going to be putting a heart uh, right um, on one of the sides of the wrist warmer, uh, we're going to, I'm going to just kind of cut this off here and have this done, but I'm going to do, show you guys how to do the heart first. And then you will have a choice to either join this first and then add the heart or you can add the heart first and then join it together so that is an option that i'm leaving for you guys to do uh it may be it may be easier to join it first and then put your heart here or if you want you can just fold it like this put your heart where you want it to go and then join it and then you can join the rest of the stuff together okay but for now we're just gonna kind of put this guy on the side so we can start on the heart okay so for the heart we're going to of course use the red yarn that i showed you guys at the beginning of the video um so this is what we're going to be using to do the heart and to do that we're going to make a really small heart because we want it to fit about somewhere here for our uh, on our wrist warmer and so we cannot make it too big so we're just going to start it by doing a slip knot okay and then we're going to do a chain of uh seven so one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. Okay, and then we're going to kind of turn our work like this. We're going to skip the seventh chain. And in the sixth one, we're going to go in the back of that chain and do a single crochet stitch. And then we're going to move on to the next stitch and do a single crochet stitch. And we're going to do this to the end of this row okay so that is the end of our first row here so we should have six stitches all together and that's because we skipped the first stitch when we started this row and for row two i'm going to do a chain of one and turn and then i'm going to pretty much go through both loops here and do a single crochet and then go into the next stitch going through both loops again do a single crochet you're going to do that in the in each of the stitches until you get to the end and you will always have six stitches and we're going to do this for about four rows four five rows six maybe so right now we have two here the goal is to make sure that all of that that this shape is a square shape okay so all four corners are going to be the exact same uh, measurements so I'm going to do another row and I'm going to go for six rows. And then if I see that my uh, angles are the same for the square, then I'm going to stop. If I need one more row, then I'll do that. And if I need um, less rows, then I will undo that. So go ahead and create your square with this. So just repeating this pattern until you have your square and then come back to the video when you have that okay so i ended up doing uh six rows here to create my square so as you guys can see that's my square here um so depending on also how tight you crochet you may have done seven rows or maybe even five if you crochet a little bit loose but for these and how i crochet that's the square here with six rows that i completed okay so now we're going to move on to the next step of this and we're going to um create the 
uh, a little bit of a corner here so we're going to chain one first and then right in the middle of the center uh, block here we're going to do a treble crochet in that gap in the middle okay so just do your treble crochet and then we're going to go into that gap again and do another treble crochet and we're going to do a total of six treble crochets in this gap so i have two already i'm going to do two more oh sorry um four four more so i have three now three more to go okay so that's my six treble crochets in that space in the middle okay right there and then i'm going to chain one and i'm going to do a single a slip stitch right in that corner so this uh corner of the square so there's a corner here there's a corner here square uh, corner here corner here so in this corner next to where i did the treble crochets i'm going to do a slip stitch there just like that then i'm going to chain one and i'm going to find a center on this side so this right here will be my center on this side and I'm going to do six more treble crochets in that space. Okay. So when you do your six treble crochets in this space, then come back to the video and we will move on to the next step. Okay. So that's my ex, uh, six treble crochets in that corner or in that section as well in one of the sides of the square. And now that I have finished the six, so as you can see here, I have six here, I have six there. And as you can see, our heart shape is starting to come together. But as soon as I connect it to this corner here, you will now see how it actually looks like. So I'm going to chain one here after my six treble crochets in the same space. And then I'm going to slip stitch in that corner again, just like we did in the previous corner okay a little bit tricky here there you go and so as you can see now you have a heart and now you can either stop here which i will or what some people do because there is a little bit of a rough edge here you can uh do single crochet stitches going down this side to flatten this side and make it kind of as even as it is on this side so i'm going to show you guys how that will go just something like that and then make sure you have one in the very corner so that you maintain or your slip stitch in the corner so that you maintain the heart shape so i'm going to do it like that but what you could have done too is just stop it there if you don't care about the rough edge there Okay, so now that you're done here, we're going to cut the yarn and you're going to leave a tail because we're going to be using this to sew this to the body of our of our wrist warmer. So I'm just going to cut the yarn here. Okay, and then you put your excess yarn away and then we're just going to do a chain one here and pull so that we can lock this guy in like that. Okay, so that's your heart and you can weave this in now if you want or if you want you can sew it because it's gonna go like this on the wrist warmer so if i bring our wrist warmer here it's gonna go something it's gonna go something like that right so that's kind of like the point so you can either weave this guy in or you could just leave it in like this i will weave mine in so i'm gonna go ahead and do that weave these in and then I'm going to come back so we can uh, join it together here. And I will explain the option you have to do uh, either before you join the actual work or after. Okay, so see you guys in a minute. Okay, guys. So I'm going to uh, go with uh, kind of joining my work here before I put the heart on. So for those of you who want to join the heart first, then you will just go ahead and place it where you want it to go. So for me, I will be putting it somewhere like that. This is where my thumb hole will go so it's kind of just lines up to where my thumb will go then it will that means it's gonna fall right here um so i'm gonna do mine after i have joined my work together and the reason for that is it's just easier for me to place it and not 
uh, not be doubtful or thinking, I don't know where I'm going to do this and that, okay? So I'm going to join the work first and then I will put the heart on. So that's the option I'm going with. So to join our work together here, I'm just going to, let me put my yarn in the darning needle here. If I can, maybe I just, I will just cut the edge here so that it's not too puffy. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and start joining these guys. So we're just going to go ahead and go into the first stitch here and then to the stitch on the other side and pull by now you guys know how to uh, join things like this whether it's sweaters or wrist warmers we always I always use almost the same technique for joining so unless you're new that's why I'm showing it but for those of you who have seen me make other things I use the same technique for joining the work okay some people use the crochet hook to just kind of uh, crochet, do like uh, slip stitches all the way to where they're sewing, but I use a darning needle, it's faster, it's easier for me. Okay, so I'm gonna do this all the way until I get to where I'm gonna be doing my thumb hole. So I'm going to do my thumb hole right about here between these stitches like this. So I'm going to work until I get here. So as you can see here, we do have stitches that we can just line up to do. But when you get here, you just have to work with these guys. So you're just going to pick up some of these uh, sections very carefully like this. And don't make them too distant or too far apart. Kind of imitate the distance of the stitches here. And do that here as well until you get to the stitch marker. Or you're know, not stitch marker. I don't have my stitch marker on. But where you should use the stitch marker where you're going to be putting your thumb hole. When you get to that, then come back to the video and then I'll show you how to make sure you leave the uh, thumb hole uh, open and then we will finish it off together and then we will do the heart. We'll put the heart on. Okay, so see you guys in a bit. Okay guys, so I have reached to the point where I'm going to leave my thumb hole and I ended up grabbing my stitch marker just so I don't actually make a mistake there. So as you can see here, this final stitch here is going to be where I stop. And I just usually go in like this and kind of lock in this section. Oops. There you go. And lock in this section even more so that it can be a lot secure in this corner because it can stretch later on with a uh, wear and tear of you wearing your mittens a lot. Um, so I just make sure that section here is strong and I will do the same on this side. And then I just weave my yarn from that side to this side so that I can bring it to where I'm going to then continue after the thumb hole. Okay, so just something like that. Okay, so now that my yarn is on this side, I'm going to remove my stitch marker, put it away. And then I'm going to pick up on this side and continue to join the work. So as you can see that went straight to the other side and I'm going to repeat that same thing on the same stitch to lock it up there. I'm going to go in like this and make sure this section here is also very, very strong before I continue joining the work all the way to the other side. So as you can see, oops, I hope I was on the camera that whole time and then you just continue to join your work until you get to the end right here so go ahead and do that and then come back when you have completed that okay so i've reached the end here as you can see okay that's the end of joining our work here and then i'm just going to remove my darning needle and i'm going to um just knot this section here so I can kind of lock it in and close it. And then we will weave in the excess yarn here in a bit. So this is how it looks. This is your thumb hole here. Okay. And that's how your fingerless glove looks. And then if I was to go and put these on, just to try it on, then this is how it will look. Just like that. Okay. So very simple, but that's why we're adding a heart because that's going to make it look even better. Okay, so I'm going to take it off. So this is what I usually do when I join my work like this. 
I usually end up flipping it to the other side and make this the inside and the other side the outside. Just so that if there's any imperfections on the side that I'm working on or that I worked on, I can kind of bury them on the other side uh, of my uh, fingerless glove. And I'm just going to cut these guys here. I don't need to weave them in. So I'm just going to remove that. So I'm going to flip my work to the other side here because I'm going to put the heart on that side. So that's actually going to make it look so that this side is this side is the the outside now so the side that we that was on the outside or the inside is now the side that is on the outside okay so we're gonna go ahead and get our heart and then we're just going to see where we want to put it so this is where my thumb hole is here and i'm going to put it just kind of somewhere right here like this because i want it to be right close to where my thumb hole is where my thumb hole is coming off because it's gonna end up being right in the middle of my um the outside of my hand okay so i'm gonna put it right there i'm gonna take my darning needle and take the yarn that i got that i left long or the tail that i left long and i'm going to put that in there and i'm just going to make sure i hold this in place and i'm going to work while it's flat on the on the uh on the work table like this i'm just gonna make sure we put that in a good place and then I'm just going to start working by joining this like this. So I'm just going to grab some of the yarn from the the main body of the of the fingerless glove and I'm just going to weave it in by bringing it through to the heart side and then pulling it down. And then I'm just going to do this pretty much all around. And make sure you're not grabbing the bottom of your work because you don't want to shut your fingerless glove by uh, closing it through this process. So make sure you're just grabbing a little bit of yarn from the bottom work to be able to join it to the heart. Okay. So you're going to do this technique all around like this. Make sure you don't pull this section here because you want your heart to be visible like this, the shape of the heart. And then you're just going to do this all the way until you come back to the tip, the bottom tip here where we started off. And when you have that done, come back and I will, we will look at the whole prod, uh, the whole thing to see how it looks when it's done. Okay. So go ahead and join your heart and then come back. All right. So the heart is on. So this is pretty much it here. So as you can see, um, that's the heart connected to our wrist warmer. This is our thumb hold right here. This is the top uh, of the uh, wrist warmer where the, the fingers come through and then of course the bottom, okay? So that's it here. So the second wrist warmer is need to be completed. So go ahead of course and um, rewind the video and repeat exactly what we did here. And when you have your second wrist warmer completed, then come back to the video and we will look at the pair to see how we did and of course if anything is going to look like our first one here then we absolutely were successful so go ahead and do the second one and then come back when it's done okay guys so i have gone ahead and completed both of my gloves here so as you can see the hearts are on and that's pretty much the end of the project here. So just one quick tip uh, quickly because I did just make this mistake. So when you do put your hearts on, make sure your thumb holes are both facing on the inside so that they're not facing. If it was facing away and I put my heart here, then my thumb hole would be here, which would make sense. Uh, it would just look like it's one, um, the glove for one hand. So make sure your thumb holes are facing both, uh, either both outwards like this, if you're putting the hearts on, or they have to both be facing inwards like this, okay? So these are done. So yeah, so thank you so much for watching the video to the end. So hopefully you will enjoy making these just as much as I did. And of course, don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you have not yet done so. And I have a lot of things that I post on a weekly basis. You will probably find something that you will definitely like to make. So don't go, um, don't forget to do that. And as well, don't forget to hit the notification bell as well as like the video. Okay. 
so uh as per usual thank you so much and i will see you guys in the next one